600 miles above Earth, a remarkable satellite orbits in perfect silence. Inside its chambers, cool to near absolute zero, four spheres float in a vacuum, spinning thousands of times a minute. They are the most perfect objects ever created by human hands. The satellite maintains its position with bursts of helium gas, just one hundredth the force of a human exhalation of the type of puff used to clean a pair of spectacles. Its telescope locks onto a distant star with a precision equivalent to spotting a human hair from a hundred miles away. But this engineering marvel isn't measuring anything we can see. Instead, it's detecting something far more elusive. Tiny distortions in the very fabric of space and time itself. Distortions so minute that many scientists believe they could never be measured. Until now. Origins and Theory In 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, a revolutionary way of understanding gravity that would transform our view of the universe. Instead of seeing gravity as a mysterious force between objects, Einstein proposed something far stranger. Massive objects like Earth actually bend and warp the fabric of space and time around them. But Einstein's theory made predictions that seemed impossible to test. According to his mathematics, Earth doesn't just curve space-time. Its rotation should actually drag space itself along with it, like honey swirling around a spinning ball. This frame-dragging effect would be incredibly subtle, detectable only with precision far beyond the technology of Einstein's day. For decades, these predictions remain purely theoretical. Then, in 1959, two physicists independently proposed an ingenious solution. Leonard Schiff of Stanford University and George Pugh of the Department of Defense suggested that a gyroscope in orbit around Earth might be able to detect these minute distortions in space-time. If they could build one precise enough, its axis of rotation would shift ever so slightly as it moved through warped space. The Challenge However, doing so would be no mean feat. As physicist Kip Thorne would later observe, quote, in the realm of black holes and the universe, the language of general relativity is spoken, and it is spoken loudly. But in our tiny solar system, the effects of general relativity are but whispers. These whispers were incredibly faint. The larger of the two effects, Earth's warping of space-time, would tilt a gyroscope's axis by just six thousandths of a degree per year. The frame-dragging effect would be even smaller, around 39 milliseconds annually, about one hundred thousandth of a degree. Detecting such minute changes requires a level of precision that seemed impossible. The gyroscopes would need to be nearly perfect spheres, spinning in a vacuum with virtually no friction. Any imperfection larger than 40 atomic layers would make the measurements meaningless. The satellite would need to point at a distant guide star with accuracy equivalent to being able to see a human hair from a hundred miles away. Even the slightest disturbance, from atmospheric drag, magnetic fields, or thermal variations, could overwhelm the tiny relativistic effects they were trying to measure. The requirements were so extreme that the team dubbed them the Seven Near Zeros, a set of almost impossible constraints that had to be met simultaneously. The gyroscopes themselves needed three, near-perfect sphericity, a completely uniform coating, and homogeneous density throughout. The environment surrounding them demanded four more near-zero conditions, virtually no magnetic fields, almost no gravitational disturbance, ultra-high vacuum, and temperature just above absolute zero. Meeting these requirements pushed engineering to its limits. The surrounding magnetic field needed to be less than one millionth of Earth's natural field. The vacuum inside the probe had to be in an environment virtually empty of air molecules, trillions of times thinner than Earth's atmosphere. Temperature variations could be no more than five millionths of a degree. Most challenging of all, the technology required simply didn't exist. New breakthroughs would be needed in nearly every aspect of the experiment, from material science to cryogenics, from optical systems to spacecraft control. The boundaries of human engineering would need to be pushed beyond anything that had been achieved before. Development To take on this difficult task, Stanford University, Lockheed Martin, and NASA joined forces. Over four decades of development, the team invented more than a dozen entirely new technologies to meet the mission's demands. The gyroscopes began as pure quartz blocks sourced from Brazil and refined in Germany. 
engineers developed a revolutionary polishing process, using microscopic abrasive particles in random patterns to achieve an almost unbelievable level of smoothness. The final spheres were so perfectly round that if enlarged to the size of a football field, any imperfection would be thinner than a sheet of paper. In order for the experiment to work, the gyroscopes would need to spin in a perfect vacuum without any physical support. The solution was ingenious. They would float in an electric field, suspended just one thousandth of an inch from their housings. While it took nearly a thousand volts to levitate each gyroscope on Earth, in space it would take less than a hundred millivolts. The ultra-sensitive instruments needed to detect changes in the gyroscope's orientation could be thrown off by even the tiniest magnetic field, including Earth's. In addition, to maintain the ultra-cold temperatures needed for the experiment, the team developed a sophisticated doer, essentially a giant thermos bottle holding 645 gallons of superfluid helium. A special porous plug invented at Stanford controlled the helium's behavior in zero gravity. Even the boil-off of helium gas was put to use, providing propellant for the satellite's thrusters. Choosing the right star to guide the experiment proved nearly as challenging as building the spacecraft itself. The team examined 1,400 candidates under exacting requirements. The star needed to be bright enough for telescope tracking, emit radio waves detectable from Earth, sit in precisely the right position, and remain close to a distant quasar serving as a fixed reference point. Only three stars in the entire sky met all these criteria. The team selected I am Pegasi, but faced an additional challenge. The star traced a complex spiral pattern as it orbited its binary partner, a motion that would need to be carefully mapped and subtracted to reveal the tiny relativistic effects. The Mission On April 20th, 2004, after decades of preparation, Gravity Probe B finally lifted off from Vandenberg Air Force Base. The launch window was just one second long. The orbit had to be precisely aligned with the mission's guide star. At 9.57 and 23 seconds AM PDT, the Delta II rocket carried its extraordinary payload into space. For the next four months, engineers meticulously tested and calibrated the spacecraft systems. By August 2004, the gyroscopes were ready for their historic task. Jets of helium gas spun them to 4,000 revolutions a minute, a motion so perfect and frictionless that if left undisturbed, they would continue spinning for an estimated 15,000 years. The spacecraft rolled slowly as it orbited, its telescope locked onto the guide star I am Pegasi. Inside the probe, cooled to a temperature just above absolute zero, the gyroscopes spun in their electric cocoons, while ultra-sensitive squid magnetometers monitored their orientation. For 17 months, they gathered data about the gentle tugging of space-time on their spin axes. Analyzing the results proved far more difficult than anticipated. Tiny electrical patches on the gyroscope surfaces masked the relativity signals, like trying to hear a whisper in a noisy room. The team spent five years developing mathematical techniques to isolate these faint signals. Critics began to question whether the mission could succeed. In 2008, a NASA review panel warned that the required reduction in noise level seemed impossibly large. But the team persisted, securing alternative funding when NASA support ended, determined to extract the faint signals from their mountain of data. Results and Legacy In May 2011, after five years of analysis, Gravity Probe B confirmed both predicted effects. The team measured Earth's warping of space-time to within 0.25% of Einstein's prediction and detected space itself being dragged by Earth's rotation for the first time. The whispers had finally been heard, proving these minute effects could indeed be measured, an achievement that, while not as precise as hoped, provided compelling new evidence for his description of gravity. The technological legacy of Gravity Probe B extends far beyond its scientific achievements. Its pioneered drag-free satellite technology enabled a new generation of Earth-observing satellites that map our planet's gravity field. The ultra-precise gyroscope technology and advances in cryogenics found applications from navigation systems to medical imaging. Perhaps most significantly, Gravity Probe B demonstrated what human ingenuity could achieve at its limits. The project's decades-long development produced 85 PhD dissertations and breakthroughs that continue to influence space missions today, including those seeking Einstein's predicted gravitational waves. 
what began as a test of fundamental physics became one of the most ambitious engineering projects ever attempted, a testament to humanity's quest to understand the deepest mysteries of our universe. <laughs>